It started out as a regular night for Dan Saunders, a bartender from Australia. He finished his shift and decided to hit the town with his friend Mark. They moved to a bar in downtown Wangaratta. A few rounds of drinks later, it was Dan's turn to pay again, but his wallet was empty. So he headed to the nearest ATM to get some cash. He slid his card into a National Australia Bank ATM at 12.11 a.m. Dan knew that he had around $3 in his savings account and he was almost $2,000 in debt with his credit card. He also had a joint account with his fiancée, but that wasn't an option because he'd need her approval. So he decided to try his credit card, although it was close to its overdraft limit. When Dan tried to check the balance, he received the balance unavailable at this time message several times. Then he tried transferring 200 Australian dollars from his credit account to his savings. The ATM said transaction canceled and spat the card out. Dan could have left, but something told him to try and withdraw 200 from his savings account anyway. The ATM easily satisfied his request. So Dan grabbed the money and reunited with his friends at the bar. They had a good time, and once they were done, Dan was walking home past the ATM that had given him cash before. He still couldn't figure out what had happened, but decided to give the machine another go. He followed the same scheme as before and transferred another 200 to his savings account. Again, he was trying to withdraw it, the machine told him the transaction was cancelled, but the bills still ended up in his hands. He decided to try it with 500, then 600, and it worked again and again. The lucky guy ended up withdrawing around 2,000 Australian dollars this way. When Dan woke up in the morning, he thought it must have been all a dream, but the bills were still in his wallet next to him. He decided to check with the bank, and they told him his savings account was 2,000 in debt, but there was no record of any transfers he made from his credit account. So, it looked like there was a lag between what the ATM gave Dan and what his balance was. He decided to test his theory and see if, by transferring enough money, he could cover whatever he had spent. So, the next night, he went to the same ATM between 1 a.m. and 3 a.m. He figured that was the time the machine went offline. The ATM showed that his savings account balance was minus $997. So he transferred a thousand, got the error message, and then checked his savings account, which was in the minus. Then he transferred one more thousand to his savings account, and the balance went up to three dollars. So his theory was right. All he had to do was transfer more than he was taking so the balance stayed positive. So he took two thousand, but transferred four thousand. And then Dan just couldn't stop. He would call his bank again and again to make sure the scheme was working. He went back to the ATM to withdraw more and more money. Within the first couple of weeks, he had transferred 20,000 Australian dollars. He put around 1,000 into the joint account with his fiance and bought drinks for everyone at the bar. Dan quickly got used to having infinite amounts of money, eating out at the best restaurants and throwing extravagant parties every week. He also did some generous things like covering his friend's university tuition fees and sending one of them to study in France. The most expensive thing he bought was a flight for over 50000 in a 20-seat private jet which took him and his friends to a private island near Bali. And as if all the money he had wasn't enough, Dan tried to multiply it by betting. Over four and a half months, Dan had spent around $1.6 million. He kept the whole thing secret and didn't tell his fiance or his family about it. He knew they wouldn't approve of that. Neither had Dan's boss. Once he found out Dan was making his bets while at work, he invited the bartender for a serious conversation. It turned out that Dan and his friend would waste more money in one night than the tavern totalisator would normally see in a month. Dan was fired from his job. Once his fiancée found out about it and the reason for it, she thought he was engaged in some illegal activity. She told Saunders she didn't want to have anything to do with it and broke up with him. Dan started feeling guilty for what he was doing. He even had nightmares of getting arrested. He decided to stop withdrawing the money, which was never his, and gave himself into the bank. 
They told him he'd be in a lot of trouble, but the bank wouldn't do anything about it. It was a task for the police. Dan was anxious about his future punishment, but he still believed he hadn't taken anyone's money, just digits from the screen. After he appeared on national TV and his story had made it to printed press, he was finally taken seriously. Three years after he had given himself in, he finally got arrested on 111 counts of fraud. The judge and the prosecutor had a hard time understanding what he had actually done. After a year in jail, Dan went back to his bartender job for 22 an hour. Easy come, easy go. Also became true for Lou Eisenberg. He won the New York State Lottery jackpot of 5 million US dollars on a lucky Friday the 13th, 1981, when he was 53 years old. It was the largest lottery payout at that time. He quit his job as a light bulb fitter and started traveling to places like Paris, Las Vegas, Hawaii, and California. He appeared on TV and met with celebrities like Oprah Winfrey. He didn't work for 20 years and lost a good deal of his winnings gambling. He also had to give away what was left to pay off his ex-wives. By 2001, he had spent all the money and moved to a mobile home in Florida. He never stopped playing the lottery and passed away at the age of 93. Lee Ryan from London won over $10 million on the UK National Lottery in 1995. At that moment, he was awaiting his sentence for handling stolen vehicles. So he decided not to waste time and went on a huge spending spree for the six months he had before going to jail. He bought a luxurious country mansion for over a million and a whole fleet of expensive cars, including a Porsche, a Bentley, a Ferrari, and a BMW. All of them came with personalized license plates, Lee 1, Lee 2, Lee 3, and Lee 4. The press nicknamed Lee the lottery leg. One of his friends shared that some bad guys were after the money, so Ryan had to get security for his family, including high-tech cameras and a bodyguard. After spending nine months behind bars, he went back to splashing money like there was no tomorrow. Ryan left his wife and ran away to Kyrgyzstan with his girlfriend. By 2010, all his lottery money was gone. Lee even had to sleep in the streets of London in his sleeping bag for a couple months. After a while, he got a job as a cameraman, and he now hosts homeless people in his apartment in South London. Denise Rossi lost more than just her lottery winnings. In January 1997, she unexpectedly filed for divorce after a seemingly happy 25-year marriage. Two years later, Thomas received a surprise letter addressed to his ex-wife from a company responsible for paying big money to lottery winners. Thomas sought legal action and soon discovered that Denise had won a $1.3 million jackpot just 11 days before initiating the divorce process. In accordance with California law, Thomas should have been entitled to 50% of Denise's newfound wealth as part of their divorce settlement. To punish Denise, a judge ruled that she must give not just half, but all of her lottery winnings to her ex-husband. So she never got to spend the money she had won. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.